Welcome back guys, it's Legit Lee back again with another video. Today I'm showing you guys how to use Alexa to actually voice control your cameras. Now, um, there has been a guy that I've seen on YouTube that actually had made something like this, but I noticed that his was wired. And what I mean is there's different types of wired controllers for your cameras, so like DSLR, mirrorless, and so forth, that um, have a wired camera shutter controller. So you could be able to plug this in into your camera and actually press this button like if you was to tap on your camera's shutter, just like if you're going to take a picture. And people use this a lot for when they don't actually want to touch their camera if it's mounted to a tripod. And what's going to happen, basically, if you touch your camera while it's mounted on the tripod, you could you cause you can cause a shake in your camera right when you're trying to take a picture. So people will go with this so they don't even have to touch their camera. Now they have wired ones and actually wireless ones here. And the wireless ones have a little receiver and a transceiver. And they have these push button uh, they have a push button switch to have different modes that you could click on and actually have a control for your frequency basically. Um, it uses, I think it's radio frequency, I'm not 100% sure, but um, basically they have these switches on the back so if you have different remote controls or frequencies out here they don't actually have to collide with each other basically and disrupt the frequency, you could set them on their own channels. And um, so you'll be able to actually wire one of these up or wire a wire, uh, wired controller up. The one I've seen online on YouTube, um, it was Mike and Laura. He uh, basically got me to want to do this because it seemed like a very good idea to do. And um, he had, it seems like he had a wired one. I was looking really into in his video there and uh, his wired one, obviously, you if you're having a wired one, it's not as good as having wireless, I would assume, because you gotta think, you're dragging your camera tripod all over the place, and then you have to make sure that it's close enough to your relay boards here, and close enough to, you know, Alexa, because you only have so much wire on a controller here that will allow you to move around. So if you went wireless, um, these ranges are, can vary, but they're usually pretty pretty far out. I tested from like my bedroom all the way into my kitchen, all the way outside. And that was a good, I wanna say 20, 30 feet worth of range. And it was still able to, I had, I didn't have my camera with me cause it was in, the, in my room at the time, but I had uh, somebody watching while I kept pressing the button just to test out the range. So they do go pretty far. And uh, what's going to happen is, so if you're wanting to just have your, because your camera already comes with a battery, obviously, you can get, you know, wired to plug up to an outlet or whatever the case may be. But originally when you buy your bat, your camera comes with a battery and you charge your battery and you take your camera wherever you want to go with it. So um, you'll be able to actually do the same thing if you have a wireless controller. And what you're going to do is actually just most uh, Alexa, the Echo, actually uses a USB uh, phone jack and it runs off of basically five volts of electricity, like if you used to plug up uh, your phone charger. So you can actually make Alexa uh, go anywhere you want to. I do have a battery power bank that I tested this on and I could literally just carry the Echo Dot wherever I wanna go. So as long as you have an internet connection that has a wide range, you can actually make Alexa wireless also. So that way you don't actually have to plug it up to an outlet, you could just carry it with you. And so with her being wireless and your remote control voice activated um, camera could be wireless, then you could take your camera anywhere you like to go, whether you're using Alexa through your for your wire, because basically you need Alexa f to hook up to your Wi-Fi. And um, if you have mobile hotspot on your phone, you could hook her up to that. 
I mean, I haven't tested that out yet, but I mean, Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi. So as long as she's connected to the internet somewhere, whether it's uh, connecting to the, I would say, McDonald's, a Walmart, a Lowe's, wherever you're at, you can make, as long as there's Wi-Fi, you could get Alexa to work, basically. And um, you just have to connect to their Wi-Fi or your mobile hotspot. So um, I'm using, I have two different boards here. There is a four channel relay board and a eight channel relay board that I can use. And the reason why I have so many different relays is Alexa uses um, IOT. And what that is, is basically the abbreviation for internet, internet of things. And what she does is how she connects to all your smart devices. She actually um, wirelessly connects to another wireless uh, smart device. So whether it is a uh, light bulb outlet socket that they have for the Wemo, and um, there's like a bunch of different ones out here, out there. I didn't research into all of them because I didn't need to. The main thing that I'm trying to do is actually make my own wireless put push button switches basically. Instead of having this be my push button, I would actually use a relay as a push button because inside of um, inside of some of these uh, wireless controllers here, there's a push button on here and it's basically a momentary switch. It presses and holds for just a moment and then after that, um, it, it releases. So basically it makes a contact inside of the controller that basically if it was like a broken wire for a minute there and once you press the button so the broken wire is now not broken anymore it makes a connection to a complete wire and um, that what that's what gives it the signal to turn on or whatever the case may be it's just a break in your circuit and um, so with a relay, you could these relays right here are programmable through Arduino code or Circuit Python, depending on what kind of coding you use. And um, basically, you could program any of these relays that I have on here, or the any, any of the eight channel relays, to be controlled by a microprocessor. And that's basically Arduino. Um, they have a whole bunch of them out there. You just have to look up microprocessor. Arduino is one of the most famous ones because they're sponsored through uh, Adafruit and you'll be able to look up their website. They have a bunch of different um, types of Arduino uh, microprocessors, whether you get the Flora, the um, regular uh, Uno or Nano, depending on which one you want, they're all different file sizes. They, they all hold different types of file sizes. They're all designed a little different. Some are smaller, some are bigger and that, and things of that sort. And, um, but the one that you're gonna wanna use for this system that I'm making here is, um, there's their, a Wi-Fi chip right here. It's called, on, on Adafruit, it's called the Feather, and it's a Wi-Fi, the 86, hold on, I forgot the exact name. Give me one second here. It's a 86 something. I just can't fully remember the name of it at the moment. Just give me a second here. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so yes, the Node MCU ESP8266 is the name of the chip that I'm using here. I bought it off of eBay for about $10 to $15. You could get yourself one of these. And um, I actually got two. And the reason why I have two here, I need to explain a little bit about the coding here. I've done a lot of research on these um, and how to get them set up with Alexa and the relays and what's going on is I've noticed some people have said that if you buy one of these that they have trouble connecting all eight relays and I wanted to be able to use an eight channel relay board and I have done some testing and I have noticed that I was able to get up to four to six I think for the relays themselves so I just want to make sure that I had enough um, channels basically to be able to do so 
and uh, these this actually has um, a bunch of channels on here they are digital outputs and inputs on these pins here and um, so what's going to happen is basically this is your microprocessor and it has a Wi-Fi uh, chip on it that actually connects to your Wi-Fi and you actually have Alexa locate your microprocessor and act as a Wemo device and with that you'll be able to say like Alexa turn on house light or turn off house light turn on living room light whatever the case may be that you have it set up for you can have Alexa actually do for you and so when you say something like that a digital pin comes off of a digital signal comes off one of those digital inputs or outputs pins it's an output to your relay pin on here and it tells the relay hey wake up turn on and it'll close the open they'll close the circuit connection which will be indicating a push of a button or a flip flick of a light switch and uh, that's how this all works basically that's it in a nutshell but um, there is coding that you have to go into uh, I have downloaded and uh, edited a few different codes I will have a link uh, I will post a code in the description below to let you see uh, my code and then even after you have the code placed you can use Alexa's um, the Alexa app on your phone or tablet whatever the case may be that you have and actually be able to um, group some of the different things and name it differently basically so uh, if, you, if it's set for light switch you'll be able to actually set it for you'll be able to group that light switch so say if you need to turn on two different things so you'll use light switch one or something like that and light switch two and you group both of them together and if it's like you need to have your live room light on and your bedroom light or something like that all at the same time you could just program um, cop basically it's like grabbing both of those codes putting in one code and you'll be able to say uh, Alexa turn on my lights and it will turn on the living room and your ba bedroom light on for you if you want to do something like that it's completely customizable you just have to work at it and work with it it is time consuming here and there depending on how you go about it but um, you definitely would like to try this out I enjoy doing stuff like this so um, if you guys haven't already subscribed definitely do so I'm gonna be getting into this in just a moment and um, if you guys have any questions or comments leave that in the description in the comments below also and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and hop right into this so the first thing you're gonna want to know is you're going to need DuPont connectors to connect these um, pins to your circuit boards so uh, everything on here has a pin out and the pins basically connect to each other and so let's hop into it now um, what you're gonna do is you're going to download the you're gonna copy and paste the code that I'm gonna put inside my description here and um, I got this from somebody else I'm not saying that I've actually wrote, written this whole code so congratulations to whoever actually wrote this they're actually really great at what they do and I appreciate everything they've done for me here and um, so the first thing I'm gonna do first is actually plug up my Alexa here so that was she'll power on let's give her a minute to start up here and on top of that, while we wait for her to plug up, we're going to make sure that you have the latest version of Arduino downloaded from the website. And it's uh, just to make sure that everything is going to be working properly. And we're going to plug in our USB. It's using basically the USB type B, I think. And it's the actual like phone smartphone charger version and you're gonna plug that in and you'll hear it actually connect to your computer just like you would normally in anything that you plug in here and um, 
once that's connected you can go to your computer and you're gonna go to not into your computer but to my computer you're gonna right click on it and go to manage And then you'll go down, you'll go over to my de, uh, device manager here and go down to COM ports and you'll see what your USB uh, COM is for your microprocessor here. And you see mine is USB to UART bridge and the COM port is on number nine. That's important because you need to know what COM port you're going to have to set for your Arduino here, your programming. So you'll go to Tools, make sure that you have the right board selected. I'm using Node MCU 1.0 ESP negative 12 E, I mean dash 12 E module. And you'll have to download the module off of your uh, for your firmware for this and uh, they have different videos for that I'm not going to get all into detail about that information right now um, but uh, it's going to be on COM port number nine and you'll just go for to get your that's basically your library you just need to download the library for that and you'll just go to manage libraries and then you'll be able to find your um, new the mo node MCU the 8266 and I do have a I downloaded this offline this is just the GPIO pinouts of what the board that I'm using looks like and you'll get the data sheet and all that if you want to you can look all that stuff up online just Google search it it'll come up and uh, anyway, so now that we are able to know what board we're using and know what COM port it's on, now you're going to go into the sketch. And uh, I do, I will have a link in the description for where I got mine from and even uh, what I, how I tweaked mine to make mine work for my uh, setup here. Anyway, um, so first of all, you're just going to go down a little bit here and um, you'll see it says void relay on, void relay off for number one, two, three, and four. So basically there's four relays that are going to be for your um, four relay board basically because I have a four channel relay board and you can add more relays if you want to. It's just tricky because sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. So you gotta um, be careful with that. And uh, you'll go down to, you'll see the switches. The, but what you really need to look at is the pin mode here. You'll have a uh, pin number, uh, is digital pin two. That's what that is right here, it says D2. So you're gonna find GPIO two right here, or I mean, not that one, I'm sorry. D2 that you see right here, that's digital pin two, so it'll be digital pin four, uh, GPIO four on here. But uh, it's be digital pin two, digital pin three, four, and five. So it'll be not the first pin at the top, but the or the second pin, it'll be the third, fourth, fifth, and then you'll skip six, seven, and you'll go to eight. So you'll need to use one, two, three, skip two and then four and that'll be for both of your off four relay um, signal wires basically anyway uh, now we're going to go back over here and you'll see that you need to have your serial you want to have your serial begin at 15 i'll use 115 and two 200 so 115 200 and that's uh basically your bud rate and that helps uh, lets you communicate and have the right signal I'm, 
I'm not exactly sure what bud rate is exactly, but you have to have it set for that. At least that's what I have mine set for. I was having trouble when I first started this and uh, it seems like the 115, 200 bud rate is what's best for my setup here. So I would just say start off with that first. If you have problems with that, you could change the numbers. I uh, forget what other numbers there are. I know there's like 220, I think I forget. Was, there's a bunch, there's like three or four different ones. But I'm not gonna get into all that because I'm trying to make this video as small as I possibly can here. And um, uh, you have, you'll say a relay one, it'll say uh, turn on relay one, turn off relay one, and it responds. And just make sure that you set up your Wi Fi. So um, for your setup, you're going to go and change the Wi-Fi that you have to, so say this is your SSID, which is your the name of your Wi-Fi. So like whenever you look up your Wi-Fi on your phone or your laptop, desktop, whatever you have, and it comes up with your name for your Wi-Fi that you wanna to connect to, that's your SSID. And then you'll type in your password if you have a password. My Bat, my uh, Wi-Fi name is Batwave and this is my password here. Obviously you guys don't live around me so I don't have to worry about you stealing my Wi-Fi. And, um, and I don't actually have anybody that's going to be close enough to do so so I'm not worried about that. But anyway, so you'll just uh, make sure that you're, you change your Wi-Fi on here to yours and make sure that you have the correct pin mode here and then we'll go down and you'll see your relay on and this is uh it'll say it's switch relay one to turn on and then that'll be low so it gives out a low voltage for it to be on i mean it gives out a low signal for it to be on so because basically it's a, a a signal that goes out to your um, from your node to the relay boards pin and then you have a once you want it to turn off you'll say turn relay one off and then it'll turn digital it'll say digital right d2 high and that'll turn off the relay so um, we're gonna have to mess with this and I'll show you that in a moment. But first, let's go ahead and verify that this sketch works. So I just want to let you guys see that. Verifying the sketch basically is just to make sure there's no um, problem with your sketch, whether you mistype something or whatever the case may be. And uh, now you're going to actually wait for it to upload here. Give it a moment or so. Not upload, but uh, check your sketch as complementing the sketch. It should be completely fine, and um, we just have to wait here. I'm sorry about all the wait there. The computer's not new. I need to get a new one soon. I'm really looking into getting a new one. I want an i7 for a laptop so I could do uh, video editing and rendering while I'm on the, on the road there. <clears throat> While we wait on this, I uh, will be doing at the end of this video the giveaway. Uh, I'm going to show what I'm giving away and you guys, this is my 100th video that um, I'm doing. So I do appreciate all you guys that are watching my videos and liking, subscribing and all that good stuff. I do bring out content as much as I can. Um, the only reason I haven't been putting out some for the last few weeks is because we just had that hurricane and things have been kind of crazy and hectic because of it okay so now that it's done let's go ahead and upload the sketch to our board and you do see that I am set on COM port 9 and you could double check that right here and so now that we're done with that we'll just hit upload and then it's going to complement the sketch again it has to and then you'll start seeing it upload down here. There'll be a yellow uploading and you'll actually see it on your device here. You'll start seeing it flash rapidly here. And 
what that is doing is loading and um, basically uploading and getting ready to have it set up correctly. So once it's done flashing, basically it's writing the program to your uh, storage on the, on the chip here. And there you go, it's at 100, done flashing, and then that's it. So now the relay knows what's going on. I mean, the your, I'm sorry, the microprocessor is fully loaded with their code on it. So then you're gonna to wanna to get into your, you're gonna to wanna to get into your, um, app on your phone here. So now you're going to go to serial here. You go to tools, serial monitor, and that is connected to your bud rate which I stated before. And what this does, it reads the information coming off of your node MCU here. So now what you're going to do is say, Alexa, search, discover my devices. Starting discovery. This will take up to 20 seconds. If you haven't already, please enable the smart home skill for your smart device from the Alexa app. And then you'll start seeing her actually locate your chip there and you'll start seeing the signal come in from it trying to locate off of your Alexa here. You are 2.55 miles, 4.11 kilometers. And she's still listening. Carter's Corner, Florida. I don't know what that meant, but. But you could do it again. Alexa, volume 10. Alexa, volume 10. Alexa, discover my devices. Starting discovery. This will take up to 20 seconds. If you haven't already, please enable the smart home skill for your smart device from the Alexa app. And while she's doing that, she's going to send, uh, basically is going to look for your devices here. And you'll start seeing the coding populate. Discovery is complete. And then she'll be done. I found four smart home devices. If your Philips bulbs were not discovered, please press the button on the bridge and rerun Discovery. Okay, so you hear that, right? So she found four smart home devices. And that's great, because that's what you need. You have four relays, so four relays, four devices. So now that she's actually done looking for everything, um, now we can actually uh, connect our node here to actually connect the node to your relay board using these DuPont connectors here. So I'm definitely going to get that set up for you. All right, so you're gonna get some DuPont connectors. And um, basically they're female to females. Well, male, well, basically it's female to male. And um, those, the two ends are actually where you just connect the pins in. So let's just go ahead and do um, pin, digital pin two, since that's um, relay one. And uh, let's see, so. Like I said, you're going to skip. You could definitely look at that sheet that I showed earlier if you want to go back and look into that. You're going to skip the first two because it's on digital pin two. So one, two, it'll be the third one. That's digital pin two. You're just pushing and then you'll put that on, uh, on your relay board here. You just want to put it on N1 then there's N2, N3, and 4 on the board here. I don't know if you guys can really see that all that well. And uh, so I'm just going to push that into the pin here. If I can. There we go. And then you're going to get your ground and your um, voltage connected to the board off of the node here. 
So first thing we need to do is get V V I N and that's uh, basically a variance for voltage. It's a different voltage. I put it on that one for your positive and that's the bottom pin all the way on the left hand corner. And then you're going to put that to your VCC. And then you're going to get another DuPont connector and use ground. And that will be the second one up from the voltage. And you'll just put that on ground. There will be G and D on your connector. And there you have it. You see that it is on at the moment. Alexa, turn on relay one. Okay. Alexa, turn off relay one. Okay. Not sure why it's still on. I may have to reset this. So what I'm gonna do is exit out of here, then plug it in and then it should work, hopefully. I mean, it just needs to be reset. The code is already on your microprocessor, so you don't have to worry about the coding or anything. You just unplug it and then plug it back in. I don't know why it's still on. That shouldn't be right. Hmm. Alexa. Turn off relay one. Okay. Still having a problem with it, huh? Alexa, turn off relay one. Okay. It should be working. Not sure why all of them are working now. That's definitely not accurate. Hmm. Could be where I have the ground plugged into. Maybe I should do it on the other side. Or maybe we could try a different voltage here. Let's just try the three volts. Usually the that regular one would work. There we go. Alexa, turn on relay one. There okay. it goes. Had it on the wrong. Uh, I guess the VN doesn't, VIN doesn't actually work for it anymore. It was working the last time I had it. I guess now it's different. I'm not exactly sure why. But you see that it's on. Alexa, turn off relay one. Okay. And there you have it. So at the moment, this is where I'm going to go back to what I was talking about earlier. At the moment, you, um, you remember me telling you that we have to go back and mess with the coding later on. So right now, it works. And that will work for any of the other relays, no problem. Now the problem that we're, we would face is the fact that it's staying on the whole time. So just imagine holding down a button to turn something on, but you're still holding it. That's not going to work. The, mo the buttons for most uh, controllers, whether it's a, a remote control to start recording or to turn on your TV or whatever the case may be, they're all momentary switches. So they don't need to be pressed and hold on forever. They just have to have a moment of a press. So. What's going to happen is we're going to have to go back into our coding now and actually edit the code to where it's not staying on the whole time. It's going to just click on and then click off for a moment.